Hi everyone, and welcome to the first ever Appian Live Build Challenge. My name is Val Rader, Senior Solutions Consultant for Appian based out of Denver, Colorado. And today I'm joined here by Nick Marvelous McCarthy, also a Senior Solutions Consultant based out of Portland, Oregon. We've assembled six of the best Appian developers from around the world to face off for your entertainment today. Enjoy the show. Thanks, Val. I can't imagine doing this with anybody else. Now, let's meet our challengers. Hi, my name is Dan Yui. I'm a project leader at Mastodon Technologies, and I live in Sterling, Virginia. My name is Megan Markert. I'm a senior technology consultant at Ignite Group, and I'm based just out of the DC area. Hi, I'm Harshit Bum. I work as a software engineer in Appian Technologies, and I live in India. Hi, I'm Mike Schmidt. I live in Northern Virginia, and I am the Appian Architect with SOC LLC. My name is Jason Moorcroft. I work at Vision Point Systems, and I'm based in London. Hello, I'm Emmanuel Holm. I live in Tennessee. I will currently work for Clayton Holmes as a software engineer. Our challengers are waiting to get started. But first, let's introduce Appian's community and that market lead, April Schupel, to tell us more about what they'll be working on today. Take it away, April. Thanks, Nick and Val. I'm April Schupel, the community and app market lead at Appian. Appian community is the one place where users can go to get access to all of the information, content, and tools that they need to be successful using Appian. For the past few years, we've run a global online hackathon leading up to Appian World. This allows teams to get together and work on a project that excites them and to really showcase the art of what's possible using Appian. Stay tuned until the end to find out who are the winners from this year's online hackathon. Now, in order to step it up a notch, we wanted to add another challenge to our hackathon program. And so here we are at our first ever live build challenge. This build challenge will showcase individual developers as well as the speed and power of the Appian platform. Our six contestants will have one hour to build a functional application that meets three main areas. First, user stories. Were they able to successfully meet all of the user's requirements for the application? The second is completion time. How fast were they able to build and deploy to another environment? And third, overall application health. Are there any security warnings, unreferenced objects, or recommendations? We have an airline that needs a better way to track its fleet status and maintenance program. They have all the information about their aircraft and the inspection history data, but they don't have a unified view of everything across their different airports. So today we're building an application for maintenance manager Mitch. Mitch wants to be able to view all of the vehicles in the fleet in one place, to be able to click in and view more detailed information about an individual aircraft, as well as its inspection history. He wants to be able to start maintenance for vehicles that are due for maintenance. And he wants to be able to look at inspection reporting to see whether or not they're meeting their inspection goals. And with that, I think we're cleared for takeoff. So back to you, Val and Nick. Thanks, April. We'll see you at the end of the competition. Right now, let's check in with our challengers who are about ready to get started. Judges, put 60 minutes on the clock. Let's not wait any longer. Participants, get ready. You can begin in three, two, one, go. And hey, Nick, while they're getting started, let's talk about some of the key features to look out for during this challenge. Thanks, Val. Let's get into it. We have some really great new features in the latest version of Appian, and if they start by using these, they'll be set up for success. The first thing that our challengers are probably going to want to do, or something that I would want to do, is set up their records. Yeah, and looking at this right now, here we can see how easy it is to set up a record. In this case, we're doing it for vehicles, and we're utilizing one of the newer features in 21.1, data sync, right? So everything comes together nicely. Uh, what do you think about that, Nick? 
Well, I'm always impressed at the new features we're adding in every release. I think our engineering group really listens to the feedback from the Appian developer community to find out sort of what can make their lives easier. Uh, Data Sync was something that was introduced in 21.1 and you know took something that used to be kind of manual, right? If you wanted to move record data that was located in an external database and bring it into Appian, it was something you had to take care of yourself. Now we're giving that automatically to the Appian developers, letting them use it without really any heavy lifting. And that's something else new um, with the record type relationships added in 21.2. Uh, Val, I don't know if you had a chance to play with those in the early access. Oh, it's it's so great. Seamlessly referencing fields and related records. And I don't know about you, I just love that network diagram on the right. I mean, I'm a visual learner and it's very visual, very easy to pick up and use. I love it, Nick. Yeah, it's, it's great stuff. And on top of that, those new record relationships, they actually, uh, by default, give you a no-code user filter for each relationship that you define. Yeah, and taking a look at the user filters here, I like that it's automatically uh, generating the user filter from the record relationship. I mean, that's very convenient. It's not complicated at all, Nick. I mean, short video, easy concept. Yeah, it's, it's really great stuff. I mean, convenience is king for all of us. Um, but let's check in with our challengers and see how they're starting off. Uh, let's start with Harshit. Yeah, and you know what? He's our youngest competitor. Uh, he graduated in 2019, learned about low-code at Appian at the end of college, and he loved it. I mean, I, I could hardly blame him. And he's worked on um, award-winning applications, including being on the team that was second place last year in last year's online hackathon. And another thing I know about him is that, you know, he loves memes, GIFs, cryptocurrencies, who doesn't? It's the hot new thing. And, uh, you know, all those things come together. And I know that April had a chance to check in with Harshit earlier. Let's see what he had to say. Hi, Harshit. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us today so that we can get to know you a little bit better before the challenge. To start off, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I live in Jaipur. Uh, that's in Rajasthan, India. And I work as a software developer in Appian Technologies. What are some of your interests outside of work in Appian? I am a sleepyhead. I love to sleep. I can sleep for, you know, uh, a complete day, 24 hours without any pause, break and uh, things like that. And uh, whenever I'm awake, not sleeping, not working on Appian, I love to uh, enhance my financial skills because I love money management. What excites you about the Live Build Challenge? Live Build Challenge, uh, like it's one of a kind, first thing, uh, first time ever happening uh, in Appian. That's pretty much enough for exciting me a lot, but then uh, competing with the five or uh, five most uh, efficient developers or maybe the developers that have more knowledge than me. Like you were um, mentioning, based on experience, you're actually probably the least experienced of uh, the whole board of competitors. So um, what's your strategy going into that? And how do you think you'll be able to stack up? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use uh, the low code power as much as I can instead of just diving into expressions and start coding from the scratch. So maybe that can help me gather some more extra time, you know, use the low code platform to its very last uh, potential. That sounds like a good strategy. What are you doing uh, to prepare for the event? Trying to practice more and more in any of the ways I can. Do you have a, do you have a message uh, for, the, for the other competitors? It's going to be a good competition and I am going to give you a neck to neck competition. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us. It was really great. Uh, to get to know you a little better, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you build. Thank you, April. I'm I'm uh, equally excited. See you there. Hey, and I know that Harshit is excited about competing with our community champion, Mike Schmidt. Who doesn't know Mike? Um, at this point, let's check in with Mike next. Yeah. Now, Mike is off to is one of our more experienced competitors, and is really off to a great start. Um, the first thing he actually did was he started building a site. So he gets points for easy access. That is not a strategy I would have thought to use. I typically do that towards the end of my projects, but you know, he knows what he needs to nail to really, you know, complete the user experience needs there. And, and now he's deep in the record configuration. Yeah, and I, that's but, what I uh, like. let's learn a little bit more about Mike. Hi, Mike. Thanks so much for taking the time to meet with us before the live build challenge to get started. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about right, yourself? I live in Northern Virginia, and I am the Appian Architect with SOC LLC. What are some of your interests outside of work? In the before times, my wife and I would go to uh, 
a good handful of concerts every year. Um, with any luck, that might pick back up. In my old life, I was a uh, hobbyist skydiver. Uh, I, wow! I have. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that about you. Uh, yeah, I have uh, just over 330 jumps. Wow. Well, Mike, next, next, you know, in person Appian World, I look forward to really picking your brain more about skydiving. Oh, feel free, of course. What excites you about the live build challenge? It seems like a really neat way to sort of uh, showcase um, basically raw skill, uh, crossing fingers. It's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little nervous <laughs> about, you know, whether I'm going to stack up. I have no expectations. Um, and that's a little a little exciting and a little, a little terrifying. I'm having similar feelings. No, no terrifying. I'm only excited. This is going to be great. You're our top uh, you know, contributor to Appian community. Given your name recognition am amongst members of the community, you are probably going to be the crowd favorite during the competition. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I, I realized the other day the pressure is kind of on because if I don't, if I don't place at least kind of well. Do you have anything to say to to your um, competitors? I just want to say uh, thanks, y'all, for. Um, risking doing this for the first time ever. Uh, I hope we all do okay. Um, and everyone just good luck. Mike, thanks so much for taking the time to meet with us. I loved getting to know you better and um, good luck during the competition. Thank you. So Mike's a really impressive competitor. Um, you know, he's got the most happy experience of the group, nine plus years. And uh, talk about a one-man shop or taking care of a production system as the principal developer where he is now. Um, you know, he's also a community champion. I have spent a lot of time reviewing community, looking at different posts, asking questions, and Mike is is all over there. He, he owns community. It's really impressive. And when he's not doing Appian, he's a skydiver with over 330 jumps. Um, I, 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 that scares the hell out of me. I couldn't do it. I don't know, Val, if you could. Yeah, I like to dive right into things, Nick. And speaking of that, you know, I think now's a great time to take a look at how all our challenges are doing so far. Let's get some in-game perspective here. Great, so we've got uh, Harshit started right, uh, going straight for the start maintenance action process model and how it's published. Um, you can see him working there with the uh, related records at the moment. Yeah, and he's just, he's rocking and rolling. He's going, he's focused. He's on his game, cupping, pasting like a boss here. I mean, you know, he's, he's definitely going to be in the running for that 10 grand. You can see it. <laughs> you can also notice um, some of the new features that have been added in records um, in the past few releases, the new record syntax that's being utilized there. Um, it's quite a, a massive improvement for us and allows you to really streamline moving through the different components of records and fields being captured there. Yeah, that's one of the things that I really love. It's so easy to navigate. Um, with records, we've really invested a lot of time and focus on this. That's because customers have told us to focus on this, and we're getting better. And you can see the people just, you know, our shit here doing his thing in our new improved records view. And maybe yeah. Let's, so uh, let's uh, let's look. Should yeah, we check out Mike. Check Mike. Yeah, we're both excited to see what Mike's doing, Nick. It's a, <laughs> it's a pleasure here. Yeah, well, I, I kind of want to meet him now. Like, I didn't know, um, I, I didn't know he was like the king of our community. So that is that is really fascinating to me. Um, you can see he's deep in the security now. Um, you know, security has been a big thing. I know Val, you and I talk about this all the time. The oh, fact yeah. that uh, DevOps is really changing to kind of DevSecOps, and he's right in there making sure everything's set up in his records and moving forward. Yeah, and you see he's using some of the features we talked about earlier. I mean, that's a winning strategy there, Nick. And you know, we talked about how he has this approach of going for the site first like setting that up and that's the beauty with Appian. you and i both know this like you can do things in different ways you set up the data and uh first or maybe you want to set up the end user type of experience there and um you know that's the beauty of it and he's doing his thing you know smoke coming from the ears yeah, and you notice how with that that automatic sync baked in there, that's that's really handy because there is another uh, system mentioned on that screen, which name I won't say, which had a major outage yesterday. And uh, if you were using Appian with that, you would have had all your data synced in Appian and be good to go. So um, yeah, it's really impressive to see them using that and bring that forward. Uh, it looks like we've jumped over to Megan, who's um, deep in the, the record design and uh, but struggling a little bit with some of the custom record types. What is she doing now, Val? Yeah, she's really building out some of the the functions here, I mean, really easy. I, this is another thing I really love about Appian, the autocomplete. Like, 
you know what I'm thinking before I'm done thinking about it. And, you know, she's just kind of typing away. It's like a force multiplier here. So she's really creating this is ready for maintenance record, uh, not record um, expression really quickly here. And that's the beauty of it too, right? Just let's get to the blocking and tackling out of the way and run for the touchdown, baby. We're so spoiled by it. I mean, I'm actually in my free time just learning some uh, uh, some JavaScript for a side project I'm working on, and I'm like, my God, nothing has the you know compatibility of our of our software. It makes it easy for users to use. I love the autocomplete. I love the self documentation. Like it makes it amazing, and that's really what's helping to guide these competitors through this challenge. And the reason why they're going to build something amazing in the next 48 minutes. Yeah, for sure. Time's ticking down, but I don't deny or regret any success that will be achieved here. We're certainly going to reach that as well. And, you know, people came in new tap and pick it up really quickly, just like I did. I came from a Java development background, I don't develop in Java anymore. Why would I? Appian. <laughs> hey, what, what's Jason doing next? Um, so I think he's done with the vehicle record. It looks like he's working on uh, actually the summary screen for uh, the vehicle record. So he's tying it up now. Um, and yeah, he's, he's you know moving back and forth pretty seamlessly between design mode and expression mode. And that's something also I've always been impressed with that you can move back and forth in our UI designer and really get um, everything you need um, and build it the exact way you want it to look. Yes, yes. And I, I think about that too, like going between those views, like the classic more of a, uh, you know, developer view into the drag and drop modern era kind of thing. And you can switch between the two. And I don't know about you, Nick, but I always uh, find myself doing those kind of things here. But it does appear that Jason um, didn't find the generate interface feature. And that's going to cost him time. He's going to rely on the speed and expertise that he already has. But finding that feature, I think, would have been a game changer here. We'll see if he recovers. What do you think, Nick? Yeah, I feel shocked that it didn't start with that. Um, I think that's someplace you usually go. I think in every build I've done, I've started with that just to make my life easier. So uh, we'll see what happens. I, I'm sure the judges are watching as well. Yeah, that's great. Let's take a look at Dan. Let's see what Dan's up to right now. Oh, starting. Now, it looks like he's deep in his record design. Uh, he's putting a grid into a UI. Oh, he's hitting some kind of error there. It's fortunately not the dreaded target is missing error. But, um, he's <laughs> yeah, we love that one, don't we? Uh, yeah, that's that's always our favorite to discuss with beers after work, right? Um, but um, yeah, he's, he's definitely deep in building a grid and using the tools to kind of streamline the whole grid creation. Um, you know, he's spending a lot of time making that interface. It's a little concerning whether all the time he's on there is going to cost him overall. You know, we, they have to really time budget themselves to make sure they can get everything done in the 60 minutes. Yeah, what I like is he he obviously used the template, right? So he started off that way, but, you know, why not just use a record tab for his site? You know, just create that. Um, it's just so easy to do. And then you'd spend less time with the interface. That could cost him in the long run. Again, I don't put any doubt in any of our competitors. I know Dan's the man. He's going he's gonna to come back. But, yeah, if he'd used that, that might have been a bit, bit better strategy with the new features here. But he's still cranking. He's cranking along. Yeah, and Dan has a, has a personal competition with somebody else in this uh, uh, competition today. We're going to find out more about that later. Oh, but switching right. over to Emmanuel, um, you know, we were looking at him before. He started with the record design, and uh, he found the new Generate Summary View feature. Um, you can see there he's already got some uh, some logo images in there of Airplane. So he's really got a focus on keeping the theme ready for the, for the overall UI experience. Yeah, and he's already... Not only the, the images immediately, I'm like, oh, yeah, I like it, right? Visual learner and all these things. He's already editing things on the fly. Really easy. He's adding some links here as well. He's going very much with the design mode view, right? Um, less of the traditional view, which I like because it's faster to drag and drop and just refer to things that way. So I think you would agree, Nick, here. He's making really good progress. Looks like he's off to a great start. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you've said it multiple times, Val, that, you know, being a visual learner, these tools really help you. And uh, yeah, it, it, we've added more and more stuff, and it's always impressive to see what's going on. Um, but sort of what's up for us next, Val? Yeah, thinking about that, Nick, you know, what do you feel are going to be the keys to the game now? We've talked a little bit. Now that the challengers have gotten up and running, you know, gotten their feet wet, what's going to be key to winning this thing here, Nick? Uh, you know, it's something I've been gi giving a lot of thought. One thing that's going to be critical is making good use of the new features in 21.2. Um, everything's been really designed around streamlining and speeding up development. Uh, one new feature I think that's going to help a lot that comes to reporting the user story is custom record fields. Um, you can see the video rolling and start displaying them now. Val, what do you, what do you think about these? 
Yeah, what I like about this is instead of elaborate queries, you can create custom record fields to store values, you know, that summarize or concatenate or calculate from existing data. You know, I think that kind of thing is, again, an accelerator. Appian's all about speed, getting people up and running really quickly. And I know there's some other things that you really like about this feature too, Nick, that you've been waiting to tell people. Uh, yeah, I mean, I really like the, the, the being able to reference fields as quickly and easy as any other record field, um, as well as sort of, you know, choosing where data is coming from, whether it's a custom expression or a template. Uh, you can do groups range based on uh, dates, date difference, extract partial dates. There's all kinds of different features in there that you can utilize. It, it really creates a, a streamlined process. I'm, I'm always impressed at how much is being added in there. I couldn't agree with you more, Nick. And also the new generate interface feature, it's going to make it a breeze to create a summary view right from the record designer. We talked about this a little bit earlier, and here it is. Yeah, and this is a great example of something else that we've, we've added in there. I mean, you know, a couple of releases ago in the uh, expression designer, we added uh, not only the, the query wizard, but we also had the ability to create constants from the query wizard. And this is another example of that, right? Adding it right in there for you to utilize inside the record builder to get that interface ready to go. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing here too, as you can see it, from the expression mode, but everything is just ready to go there as well. Like I said, doesn't matter what type of developer you are, you've got a way to become productive in Appian. And that's what I love about the platform and the product. And speaking about, you know, what's next and what's exciting, let's check in with another Virginia-based challenger, Megan. Let's see how she's doing here, Nick. Yeah, so she's in the interface designer now. It looks like uh, similar to, um, she's, she's making something called UI Home. So this might be her dashboard. Um, similar to the other one we saw, she's not using the UI builder. So interesting, she's got um, a really focused idea on what she wants. She's, she's crushing through that column layout right now. Yeah, I love the, the, the smoothness of the drag and drop. Like I just see things populating in front of me quickly, efficiently, it looks good. I mean, you know, she's doing the things that got her to where she is. And, um, you know, thinking about that, uh, we did catch up with Megan and let's catch up with her a little bit to see what she's been up to for the past year. So April, why don't you take it away? Hi, Megan, welcome. Um, so let's get started. Just tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm a senior technology consultant at Ignite Group and I'm based just out of the DC area. Very cool. What are your other interests outside of Appian? I'm a big tennis player. Um, I like to read a lot, usually fantasy books, but then kind of the big thing that I like to tell people is I'm really into cross-stitching. Very cool. What's the latest thing you've cross-stitched? Well, this one here is kind of my really big one that I've been working on since January of 2020. Wow. I work on it every day and I'm gonna finish it if I continue on that schedule in November of 2023. 2023, oh my goodness, that, that is a crazy long-term project. What excites you about this live build challenge? Why, why did you wanna participate? I'm actually a little bit nervous for it. Um, I've never been one who wants to you know, stand up in front of a bunch of people and present things. So I think I'm a little glad that this is all virtual. So while I'll be coding and you know, you guys will see me, but I won't see all of you guys, but I'm really excited to see what we can build. Any ideas on the approach that you're gonna wanna take? We do get the requirements ahead of time. So I'm gonna be thinking already on how I want all of those interfaces laid out. It's not gonna be once I sit down for that hour, I'm playing around, seeing what looks best. I'll already have that in my head. So it'll be a matter of getting everything connected so that the whole app works. What do you think gives you a competitive edge over the, over the other contestants? So I think at, at its core, I've been a fast developer. We'll see how that compares though to, to the others. Well, Megan, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. I'm very excited to see what you build during our first ever live build challenge. Yeah, thank you, April. I'm really excited to uh, hopefully show off my skills. Great stuff there. Um, you know, Megan's a really interesting contestant. Uh, she's the only contestant that was also a finalist for the online hackathon. So maybe she'll win twice. Um, you'll have to stay tuned to the end of this uh, project to find out. Um, also, she's been working on Appian since right out of college. Uh, she jumped right into boot camp after she graduated. She's been working with Appian for the past four years. So for all of those who know her release schedule, she's familiar with 16 different versions of Appian. Uh, that's way more than me. 
Um, and she really, really enjoys sort of UI and designing sort of high level elements. And you can see here, she's really deep in her UI design. She's already got a nice billboard image there. She's working on really beautiful charts, kind of getting things up in place. So I think her final dashboard is going to be really, really impressive. What do you think, Val? Yeah, you know what? I love the confidence in the interview and what she's showing. Like, I've already got it in my head what I'm going to show. And, you know, one more thing that we discovered during our time talking with Megan is that she shares her cats with our next participant, Dan. Meow, baby. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Dan has been uh, making a, a good progress on his record list and summary. Um, if we switch over to Dan, we can see what he's working at. Um, you know, he's also um, already did his generate summary view. He used that right in the record builder. So that saved him a lot of time. He's moving forward quickly. Uh, but let's hear more from, from Dan in April. Hi, Dan. Thanks so much for taking the time to meet with us prior to the live build challenge. Uh, we're just going to use this time to get to know you a little bit better. Uh, so to start off, why don't you tell me about yourself? I'm a project leader at Macedon Technologies, and I live in Sterling, Virginia. Tell us about some of your interests outside of Appian and outside of work. What do you like to do um, when you're not uh, coding in sale? I generally like to play a lot of video games, uh, watch you know, TV and stuff. I feel like <laughs> I'm kind of boring, <laughs> to be honest, like especially this past year without being able to go out and do things. It's, it's mostly video games, uh, playing with the cats, the cats are definitely a big source of entertainment. What excites you about the live build challenge? Being able to, to face off against these other really highly skilled Appy developers from across the whole world is just an amazing opportunity. Obviously, I'm trying to win, and if that happens, I just feel like it's going to be huge bragging rights. Like, nobody else in the world can say that they are the winner of the live build challenge. Do you have a general strategy about, about how you're going to tackle it or training for this challenge? I think what I'm going to try to do is just ask one of my colleagues to just come up with an idea for an app that I could reasonably do within an hour and then just try to do it and just see how it goes. Maybe I'll do that even a couple times. What do you think uh, for this challenge gives you a competitive edge over everybody else? Well, uh, I think just having seven years of experience, I know I can build something really, really cool. It's just a question of can I do it in the hour, so we'll see. Yeah. Do you have a message for your competition or anything like that? <laughs> I don't know. Part of me wants to like be the bad guy who's like really competitive and is like, I'm going to win this thing, but I don't really have any like prepared message or anything from my fans. Um... <laughs> Dan, it was really great talking to you and getting to know you a little more and hearing about your story. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, I love the interview there. Uh, Dan, you are definitely not boring, and you can play the bad guy if you want. And, you know, thinking through some other things I know about Dan, you know, works at Macedon, seven years experience there. We talked about the three cats. Hey, cats are amazing. They're intriguing. I have cats too. I get it. And, you know, thinking about the prize money, what would you do with $10,000? A fancy dinner, maybe Nobu or someplace like that, uh, or a new sleep mattress, something, get comfortable, get luxurious. Another thing to know about Dan is, you know, he's a regular community and app market contributor. Uh, he delivered and developed Macedon's calendar component, which won component in the year in 2016, right? So some impressive things here. And he recently contributed to the Deja Ninja reporting wizard as well. You know, Dan's the man in my book, Nick. Yeah, this is really interesting. I mean, it's definitely a personal competition between him and Megan. So, uh, you know, depending on who wins, I wouldn't want to be in, in that house tonight to see all the bragging rights that's going to happen for the next year or so. Um, but let's move on. Let's check in with Jason, who's coming all the way from the UK. So we've got him up on screen here. Uh, just another uh, competitor here who's deep in uh, chart configuration, uh, really sort of focusing on using those new features to kind of build out and build those charts quickly. Um, I think we're gonna see some great reporting in here. Um, you know, he's done with a lot of the record stuff and the reporting is really coming along nice. So I'm, I'm really curious to see what the final dashboards are gonna look like. Um, you know, Val, I might steal a few ideas from my own projects. Yeah, and you'd be wise to do so. And, uh, you know, the thing is that pops out at me is all the charts that he quickly created here, you know, it's very easy to change the style of them if he wants to, and even the color. Like, we're in, we're in green and yellow land right now, but we could be in blue and red if we wanted to do that. I mean, his reporting, we know that's going to be top-notch when this is all over, Nick. That's not in question. 
Yeah, but we've actually added some great uh, chart color schemes that have been a part of Appian in the in the last release. I think one of them is called Midnight, which I really like. So maybe you'll add Midnight in the chart colors. That'll be <laughs> interesting to see. But um, now let's get to know Jason a little bit better. Hi, Jason. Thanks so much for taking the time to meet with us before the live build challenge. Look forward to getting to know you a little bit better. To start off, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm a senior consultant working at Vision Point Systems. I am the face of Vision Point Systems UK. So Jason, tell me a little bit more about your interest outside of outside of work. I play paddle a lot. I know that most people don't know what paddle is. Yeah, I have no idea. Is, what is it? It's a combination of uh, of tennis and squash, kind of. It's it's the fastest growing sport in the world. It's extremely fun, extremely easy to get into. Um, I, I recommend it to everyone. So you like to keep the mind and the body sharp and keep your creative juices flowing. So that's that's awesome. So tell me, Jason, what excites you about the Live Build Challenge? Well, to be honest, I find that I live for these kinds of things. And I think that it's gonna be a good way to not only promote Appian as a means to develop business applications very, very fast, but also to prove what Vision Point Systems and myself are capable of. Have you thought about any strategy uh, that you're gonna use? What have you been doing to kind of prepare for game day? My strategy is um, lay the foundations as fast as I can and then switch on my creative mode and try to add my unique value to, the, to, to, my, to my development. Why do you think you have a shot to win this over maybe some of the people that have seven to 10 years of Appian experience? So I know that if I compete on the technical front, I might not come on top, I might do, but I think that what's gonna give me the edge is my creative side, the way of thinking out of the box. I think that if I come up with a creative solution to one of the problems that are given to us, I think that that's what's gonna give me the edge. All right, Jason, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us and good luck. Thanks a lot, April. I'm very looking forward to, to the challenge. Yeah, that out of the box thinking is gonna serve Jason well here. And you know what? I know that he's worked previously with competitors. We're not gonna mention those names here. And even tried uh, creating his own BPM using Python, but let's face it, once you start with Appian, you're gonna go all in an Appian, just like Jason did. Uh, you could tell, you know, great stage presence. He's a performer. Uh, you know, he wants to prove himself to him and his company, Vision Point Systems. And, you know, he's gonna use his creativity to get ahead in the game here, you know, that out of the box thinking. And another thing, Nick, that I found out is that he's a pianist, been doing it for 15 years. I'm lucky if I can get 15 seconds, maybe 15 minutes in a chopsticks <laughs> jam session. That's about as good as it's gonna get. So this guy is next level in terms of talent, that's for sure. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, if I was Jason right now, I'd be feeling the pressure from this. He he is the only competitor based out of the UK, so you figure he's representing the entirety of the United Kingdom here. That That's a lot of pressure to have on you. Um, you know, he wants to show, he really wants to show those Yankees what he's made of and what this country's made of, so it'll be interesting to see how this kind of uh, uh, pans out. Um, but, uh, you know, let's move on. Last but not least, we have Emmanuel, who's coming to us from uh, good old Tennessee. So it, it looks like in the moment he's, he's busy editing his record list. Um, this is something else that has evolved heavily in the past few features, Val. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to play with some of the new stuff that's been added in the record list edit. Yeah, yeah, and I, I have. And what I like about it here is like, you go left to right, you can kind of drill into those components. You can set the different variables. It's very, to me, self-explanatory. Look at the displays options that are coming up on his screen right now. You just select one, grab and go. Again, the more visual you can make it, the easier it is for me, for everybody. And that's what I really like about these features, Nick, and we're seeing it right here. Yeah, it really gives us the, the, the overall concept of what I like to call low code, right? Like you have the ability to use those visual interfaces, those configuration interfaces, but if you want it anytime, you can really dig in there and get into the metal underneath, put the, the, put the pedal to it. So uh, he's really taking advantage of that as he moves through it, and we're seeing him move quickly through his vehicle record. Yeah, and you know, Nick, that Manuel is a self-proclaimed young gun. Maybe that's his new nickname, Young Gun. And he's bringing some heat to this competition. Now let's hear what he had to say in an interview. Hi, Manuel. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us and, and let us get to know you a little bit better before you head into the live build challenge. So to get started, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself? I live in Tennessee. I currently work for Clayton Holmes as a software engineer. 
What are some of your other interests? What do you like to do to spend your time? I like to play some video games on the side, you know, watching YouTube videos, those kind of things. What excites you about the live build challenge? First thing, it's a live build. So, you know, the idea of like, let's program while showing everybody is, uh, you know, there's chances for tons of mistakes and I just find it to be like extremely nerve wracking, but because of the nerve wracking, it's gonna be extremely fun. Like anytime you do something live, that just sounds like a blast. And I might not win, but you better believe I'm gonna be having a lot of fun doing it. So what is, it, what is your plan for game day? Yeah, like with any major big event, you know, always gotta make sure you stretch. So first thing I'll be doing, you know, make sure to loosen up my thumbs, finger, you know, last thing you wanna do is get a cramp while you're in an hour long typing session. So you better believe that's, the, <laughs> that's what my game plan is. What gives you a competitive edge over the rest of the participants in this challenge? Uh, you know, I'd like to think I have a good shot at winning and that's why I'm here. It sounds like you handle pressure pretty well. Is that right? Well, it might look like that, but underneath I'm sweating a lot. So, you know. <laughs> Do you have a, a message for the competition or anything like that? Oh boy, you know, like one of those, hey, watch out messages. Uh, that would be fun. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. hey, watch out, you know, young gun here coming through, gonna, gonna try, strive for the best. <laughs> well, Emmanuel, it was lovely chatting with you. Thank you so much for taking the time. And I'm looking forward to see what you build in the competition. Good luck. Great stuff there. You know, Emmanuel's a really interesting guy. He's, he's recently moved uh, from Colorado to Knoxville, Tennessee, um, studied civil engineering and transitioned to software engineering. You know, they say, you know, once you're an engineer, you're always an engineer, regardless of what field you're in. But I don't know, man, I feel like going from civil engineering to, tra to software engineering, that's a big jump and really impressive. Uh, Val, I don't, I don't know, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, what I like about it, he's the self-proclaimed young gun. You know, he's loose. He says he's a little nervous. Nah, he's not nervous. That's his edge, you know, he's super competitive. He'll get things done quickly. Mistakes don't stop him. You know, I just love the energy and enthusiasm, Nick. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to refer to him as Young Gun for the rest of this, this session we're gonna be on. So make sure we don't we don't call him Emmanuel anymore. Young Gun. Um, but we've had a chance to know a little bit about each of our contestants and they're pretty deep in the challenge now. I think we've got about uh, 27 minutes left. So Val, what are your thoughts so far? <laughs> well, Nick, so far, I think all our contestants are doing an amazing job. Uh, we're going to look in a little bit closer into all of them, see how they're doing. You know, time is of the essence. The pressure is maybe getting to a few people. I don't see it, but, you know, we can check in on them. You know, $10,000 is going to be in somebody's pocket here soon. So let's take a look at what they're doing here. I mean, we've got that nice view now of everybody there, almost that kind of, uh, uh, you know, streaming style where we're seeing what they're doing while they're while they're working. Uh, first of all, I can say, I feel like you can cut the tension with a knife between uh, Megan and Dan. That's some fierce competition going there. Um, you know, Jason holding sort of the entirety of the UK on his shoulders um, and Harshit's representing India. So it's another, uh, it's someone else who has to, you know, represent his country. It's really powerful stuff going on here. Um, they all seem to be in kind of different places um, working in different parts, but really assembling the, what they need to kind of finish this up. Yeah, global presence, global appeal. I love it. Like it's on the stage right now before us. And maybe let's take a look through some of our contestants. Let's start with Harshit. Take a look at what he's doing right now. Yeah, so he's finished up his, his record setup. Uh, he was in the security settings now. Um, you know, he got the start maintenance process done, but it looked like he was missing a few of the requirements for the summary view. Um, so hopefully he'll be able to jump in and add those later. We don't want him to lose points uh, in the final tally at the end when he's working with the judges. Yeah, and what I see is he's working on the reporting and, and the drillability, you know, running into things that he's overcoming quickly. You know, I kind of like the layout of what he's doing here added multiple different components. So, you know, he's well on his way. He's definitely in the mix. How about Mike? Yeah, so, so Mike's been uh, really busy actually building an error handling, um, which is, you know, fantastic. I mean, that's something that you definitely want. Um, but, uh, you know, we're hoping he doesn't get too bogged down in scalability and best practices because uh, he's got to get that. He's got to get that completed in order to get everything ready in time. Um, this stuff is important, but if you get stuck in one area for too long, you may run out of time you need. Uh, I can only imagine the pressure these guys are under. I mean, I, I build, and I think you as well, we both build a lot of... Um, demos and applications and Appian, uh, but we're never under the time constraints these guys are under. So they're really pushing through and making sure they're hitting every step they need. 
Yeah, you know what? I love it. I love the idea of build for speed and get it out the door quickly. But, you know, also have appreciation for air handling. Like, let's be thorough. Let's leave it in good hands, you know? Let's make sure it's maintainable. And, you know, I think that's something that Mike has done and he's also known for. Maybe let's check in on Megan next. You know, Megan talked of her love of UI, and you can see it here. I mean, I, I have a feeling uh, when all said is done, we're going to see her as the most impressive uh, user experience out of all of them. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what she does here. Um, she, and you can see that because she focused on getting her inspection reporting done first. She wanted to really make sure that shined before she moved on to the next thing. Yeah, you know, I'm not one of the judges here today, more is the pity, but I am, like I said, very visual learner. I love visual design. You know, I have great appreciation for for what Megan's doing. And it looks like she's already starting to deploy. I mean, did you see this? You see yeah, this? this is this is incredible. She's, we, we've got, I think we've got like 20 minutes left. Is she already almost finished? This is oh amazing. God. I don't, I, this is, this was not expected. I mean, I would say it's unprecedented, but this is the first build challenge. So it's going to be precedented shortly. But um, this is incredible. We, we still need to wait to see if she actually hit all the requirements. But the fact that she's gotten this far, she's already pushing to uh, deploy and finish it up. This is incredible. She's really crushing it on speed here. I'm, I'm, just, I'm really excited. I know. I mean, I love the confidence. Like, I'm going to deploy, ready or not, baby. You know, that sort of thing. And, you know, like, we already talked about the UI and how great that looks. So it's exciting. Is this the final thing, Nick? Is this the final thing? We will see. We will know shortly. Um, let's pivot to Jason. Let's if see what Jason finished. is doing. Yeah, I just want to say, if, if, if Megan finishes first, I really hope she shows up in uh, Dan's video feed just to announce that she's finished. That would be that would be hysterical and really just another uh, big thing there. But, um, you know, Jason, Jason is moving forward really fast. Um, he hasn't he's just starting on his process model now, uh, but he has the reporting and the site going. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on that? It's, it seems a little bit late in the contest to begin working on the process model. Yeah, you know what, it's funny. Sometimes we go do the visual stuff first and then other times we do the process. But you know, I usually like to at least get a framework of the process, get an idea, and that will guide me in my site and reporting and things like that. So it's an interesting decision, uh, maybe planned, maybe it's heat of the moment. We'll just have to see how it pans out, Nick. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I mean, that's usually the first thing I do is get my uh, framework, my process framework ready to go. So I don't know. I know you, you and I are usually in the same mindset about these things. Maybe maybe this is a good chance for us to learn something from these competitors. We may have to dial them up after this, get a little uh, uh, some interviews or find out what's going on. Be dial. Yeah. Yeah. What about Dan? Let's check out Dan. What, what's he up to here? So Dan is clearly not as far along as Megan. Uh, so, you know, we wonder, um, uh -oh. even though she may or may not show up in his video feed, uh, we wonder if, if she's saying anything or if you can hear her in the next room saying anything. We're very curious to see how this is going to go. If anything, she's got bragging rights for, you know, the fastest deploy, and I'm sure she's going to make sure he knows about this after the competition. I, you know, I kind of wonder if it's trash talk or inspirational talk, you know, is it, you can do it, you can do it, or I just... I just slayed this thing, you know, and, and uh, you know, that's the impression we're getting from Megan here. Come on, Dan, you got to rise up, got to rise up here. So I think he's doing well as well, but Megan, you know, I mean, she's ready to deploy that sort of thing. Um, you know, thinking about who's next, what about Young Gun, Emmanuel? Let's take a well, look at you, what he's doing. You know, Young Gun's a really interesting guy. And I have to say, Val, you're, you're a really sweet person that you said it was inspirational talk rather than trash talk. I mean, realistically, we know there's going to be a lot of trash talk going on. I don't know how much inspirational talk is going to be happening. Um, but yeah, Young Gun's there. Uh, he's, he's deep in. He's building his uh, summary view right now. Um, going down a very similar path as others, making sure he's getting that read-only grid in there with the data. Um, you know, they're, they're getting through, uh, he's getting through all the pieces that he needs. Um, and, uh, you know, you and I, we've talked a lot about working with the different kinds of grid aspects here and, and objects we have. What's your thoughts on sort of where he's going right now? Yeah, and I think it's refinement. You know, he's working on the look and feel here and things like that. I see that he's working on spacing and <clears throat> placement and things like that. And it's become a lot easier to work with grids recently in terms of getting that, you know, things just right. You know, so be a stickler for the details. You can be as well. And, you know, I think he's making a presence there, making it felt in terms of how that's going to look in the end. I'm still drawn to the picture of the airplane, Nick. I don't know about you. Maybe it's maybe it's my love <laughs> of flying. Maybe I fell off a, a, a high ledge when I was younger, something like that. Who knows? But uh, I'm still drawn to that as well. And, you know, I, I'm thinking of it this way. Like, you know, even if you deployed early, we see some other people still going. 
you might not have hit all the requirements. You know, you might have hit the easy button a little too early, a bit too eager. We got to wait till the end to see, right? The winner has not been determined yet. <clears throat> We're going to check all the requirements. And honestly, everybody is in the race here. We've seen some excitement, but there's still more to come, Nick. Yeah, I, I'm really, really excited to see where we go. Um, but, you know, with, with 19 minutes left, we're coming up on the home stretch of the challenge. Val, you know, in your opinion, what's going to be critical from here on out? Yeah, I've been thinking about this too, Nick. And, you know, the challenges ha have definitely done great work setting up their data. You know, that's easy to do. But now it's time to put everything together. And we saw some people putting their sites together early for our main man, maintenance manager, Mitch, very intrinsic to the story. It's that it's go time, baby. That part of the thing has to start getting done. Yeah, and we've got a few great Appian features that are going to help them get it done. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm glad you brought that up, Nick. They'll want to add record a record back grid to seamlessly pull in their data from the inspection logs. So they'll also want to use record back charts to instantly create visualizations for our main man, man maintenance manager, Mitch, Triple M. I think you just like saying maintenance manager, Mitch. I feel like this is going to be an ongoing conversation yeah, who is this point guy? after this. I, you know, I'm, I'm very, you saw the picture of him at the beginning. He's a very impressive individual running the uh, aircraft <laughs> organization here. Um, but yeah, record back charts. So you can see here that, um, you know, it, it's really designed for easy grouping by using the record relationships. I think something that's always been challenging is, you know, when you have those records and you're relating them manually, having to pull them into a meaningful report can be, you know, a lot more extra work than we've ever wanted it to be. So here we're actually, you know, allowing these easy groupings and easy, by the relationships that are being generated as part of the new records features. Yeah, I, and, and it's very easy to add a secondary grouping or measure. You talked about the faster uh, date groupings and things like that. You can even set up a custom field for duration, which will make part of this challenge a breeze because you can reference it just like any other field. So that's a big deal here in this competition and going forward. Yeah, I, I'm very curious to see, um, you know, when we finish up, and I don't know if the judges are, are checking on this or not, how many of the new features are actually being utilized in this hackathon. Uh, I don't know if you get extra points for that or not. I'm not quite sure. Um, but, uh, you know, I think if anything, oh, look, uh, Dan's wrote hi, mom on his uh, on his there. I guess his, his mother's watching. Um, we uh, uh, It'll be interesting to see how much of the new features they're going to be utilizing in these. Yeah, you know, what I like here is that there's some creative freedom. Like each person is their own individual, has their own style. You're going to see that in their end application. <clears throat> Even with requirements, you know, add your personal touch, do it quickly, you know, make it your own. And, you know, talking about the features that, you know, we were discussing here, Nick, you know, using them successfully, that's going to be critical in deploying the apps here on time and successfully, not in just in this challenge, but in any Appian project or application you create. And you know, with that, I think it's a good time to check back in on the challengers, see how they're doing. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I know that uh, Harshit's actually also deployed about the same time as Megan. So we'll see about how that works out with speed. But, you know, what is what is Dan doing there? He's sitting there not really doing much. His screen just says, hi, mom. So, so maybe he's finished as well. I didn't I didn't check him too much. Um, but yeah, it, it's interesting. We'll have to see who wins speed between Harshit and um, Megan. I'm not sure what Dan's doing. It also looks like, oh, look, he's, he's added a, uh, a heart emoji. A heart. I really want to know what Dan's doing right now. <laughs> I, uh, I I love it, right? And I don't think this is the white flag. I think this is a this is a show. Like, hey, hey, you think I'm here? You think I'm behind? No, I'm just putting this front out. You know, uh, uh, some of it is showmanship here as well. You know, and by the way, you know, Dan's already deployed as well. So you know, we've got people that have already finished. We gave them an hour. That was an aggressive goal. Some people have not only met; they've exceeded that aggressive goal. You know, it's going to come down to some subjective uh, decisions you know, checking the box and things like that. But it's amazing. I got like three people have already deployed. I mean, we're not even the last 10 they, minutes here, Nick. They do. And, and I don't know if I caught this, Val. I don't know if you saw this as well. If we can go back to Dan for a second. If you look at the tabs on Dan's screen, it looked like he had a Reddit tab open um, for uh, some. Oh, there you go. It's the first tab on the left there. Suggestions for a $10,000 vacation. So uh, clearly we've got some confidence in that household. Him and Megan deploying fast. But I don't know. I think I think Harshit's going to be right behind. Uh, you know, so I think it's going to be really fierce three-way competition between them. And, you know, it's funny. Those are the people we're talking about. What about the people we're not talking about? You know, what are they doing under the covers? Or, you know, they kind of come, you know, I, I love a come from behind story. And things like that. Yes, I love a, a Reddit sub thread as well, especially anything with 10 big ones. You know, how to spend 10 big ones is always going to be exciting. 
Um, but you know what? I think the rest of the competition might be hiding their hand a little bit. You know, maybe they're more thorough. They're going to get all the checks, even if they didn't deploy first. I mean, it's really going to come down to the wire here, Nick. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's interesting if you look. Uh, so, so Mike, uh, who's our, our you know community champion. He came out of this being, I think, the favorite. Uh, if you look at the table stakes at Vegas, oh, yeah. he was the favorite favorite for this competition. And uh, he's, uh, it looks like he's falling behind a little bit. He's still pretty deep in building his inspection report. He hasn't deployed yet. Not that he has to deploy. He still has about 13, 14 minutes left. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, if you had if you had money down the mic on Vegas, you might you might be uh, might be going home sad tonight. We'll we'll see what happens. I mean, I'm still pulling for him. I've always been impressed at his. Uh, participation on a uh, community. I mean, he really owns that. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to see what happens with him. Yeah, and it's really a difference in style and presentation. Like he's thorough, somebody who's a, uh, you know, a thoughtful contributor, a massive contributor to the Appian community and knowledge base there, you might tend to think is a bit more thorough. You know, some people are more check the box kind of people and other people are a bit more thorough. Like we talked about the error checking and things like that. You know, this still could be a come from behind story, even as the favorite early on. You know, we've had a few people deploy. I wouldn't count him out of the game yet, Nick. No, I mean, you could always see in the uh, the finished products that have been deployed. They may not have, they may not have used that time. Like they're really not doing anything right now. If it was me, if I was finished early, I'd probably be checking things because the last thing you want is your judge is going through your application, clicking on something and getting an error you're not expecting. There's, there's nothing worse than that. Um, so, you know, I, I mean, I guess, uh, Harshit and Dan and Megan are pretty confident that everything's done. Um, you know, Mike looks like he's falling a little bit behind. Jason and Manuel, or sorry, Jason and Young Gun, by the way, are uh, seem to be in the middle of the pack right now. They're they're moving on uh, strong. They're getting all their requirements done. Yeah, they're making steady progress. There's no doubt about that. And there's something magical about knowing with absolute certainty and confidence. When I hit that submit button. Oh, there's not going to be any error there. It's going to work just as I intended, right? With all the visual design components that we have, all the error checking, things like that in the design environment, drag and drop, you instantly get feedback. If something's amiss, you're going to know about it right away. Then hit the undo button. I don't know about you, Nick, but I hit undo all the time. And uh, sometimes undo feels great before I hit submit. So that's maybe what some of these people like Jason and Young Gun are doing right now. Yeah, um, you know, ever since they added that undo button, it's really made my life a lot easier, Val. I can't tell you the number of times that I have uh, made mistakes, saved, lost what I was doing, um, just just silly things where I've dragged and dropped into the wrong place or whatever. So having that undo button has been uh, really, really powerful. I don't remember which release it was added. I also don't know who in Appian Engineering was responsible for it, but um, if someone can let me know, I will make sure that uh, we send you a, a case of your favorite beer to say thank you for adding that. Uh, I'm gonna, we're going to put it on uh, Val and I's boss's tab. He has a big expense account, so we'll make sure he, he covers that. Um, but yeah, that, that's, been, that's been an amazing thing to have. Um, you know, I'm kind of curious, Val, if you were in this competition right now, like where, where do you think you'd be? What do you think you'd be doing at this point? Would you be there putting, you know, funny messages to your mom and, and looking at Reddit things or, you know, potentially banging on the wall of your partner and, and making you know, fun of them? Yeah, you know, that's a great thing. And I think, you know, humor adds variety, you know, a little bit of spice in life, even when what's in front of you, you know, there's 10 large in front of you, like there's a prize here to get, you know, you still got to approach it with a little bit of levity, you know, make it fun, you know, make it engaging, make it entertaining, you know, play around with layouts or things like that. You know, I saw some graphs coming up, these nice circular graphs that look really good. They build really nicely. And, uh, you know, if you have to hit undo, it's just one button. It's just one button. You press it yeah. real quickly and you've undone all the uh, great ideas that you had and you got new ones right away, Nick. And, uh, you know, just really flexible that way. And I know that some of these people are are using that, you know, and at this point, I think we've got four out of six deployed. And yeah, uh, I, I'm hearing that, too, Val. We've got four to six people have uh, deployed. Uh, this is really blowing away the team that, that's running this or judging team. They were not expecting this. I kind of wonder if for next year, do we need to create something harder, a, a more more of a challenge, or maybe we need to give them less time? I don't know, but clearly uh, we we uh, underestimated how strong our competitors would be. I mean, look, I mean, Jason's sitting there, he's either reading a book, taking a nap, or playing with his phone. I'm not even sure, but um, it's 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 really impressive. These guys have only had a couple days with the requirements and something like 10 days with the, the early access version of 21.2. So the fact that they're crushing it this fast is just absolutely mind blowing. Yeah, and the thing is too, is that, you know, you can tell the people who gotten ahead, you know, they're using the features that are coming up in our next release, 21.2. 
you know, general availability is going to be just a few weeks away. All this stuff is going to be there. And, you know, really that's how the challenge was designed. Like it's one thing to be proficient. It's one thing to be excellent, you know, to be a rock star. It's another thing to be embraceive of the new technologies that come out. They come out every quarter with Appian, right? So if you embrace those things, then you can make an hour turn into 40 minutes. And who couldn't use another 20 minutes in their day? Am I right, Nick? Exactly. I mean, I think uh, I hope they're all trying to figure out how to spend that ten thousand um, dollars. It's going to be it's going to be tough for the judges to figure out who's winning this. I, I am not envious of that group. Uh, I'm also glad I'm, I'm not a judge. Um, so yeah, I, I'm very curious to see how this how this plays out. Um, you know, especially with a group that not only I, I guess they're so strong with Appy and that you know they're, they're just figuring this stuff out, right? Like we don't even have the the docs published for 21.2 yet. They're working off just the software itself and figuring things out. That's that's always super impressive. Yeah, it is just self-starters here, right? And, you know, it's funny. Maybe they should commentate next year and will participate in the challenge, you know, a little bit of role reversal there. But, uh, you know, just thinking about it, I don't know about you, but I love Appian Docs. You know, I use it as a bedrock, the version of truth, everything like that. You know, I love how public it is, how accessible it is. And these people had none of those resources. They just had the mind, the will, and now the technology right, the ability, and it's the marriage of ability, productivity, and, you know, the product suite that makes this all happen. And Nick, you know, I have to say the same. I, I'm blown away here. We looked at the requirements. We're like, yeah, you know, this is going to push some things, but these people have just, you know, they're rock stars. There's no doubt about it. I love seeing it. How about you? Yeah, I, I agree. And I mean, just to go back to your point about documentation, I mean, I'm, I'm always impressed by our Appian documentation. That's something, it's the reason why I think uh, we're able to build such powerful competitors like like this team here. Um, you know, I think it, it gets them started and then they're sort of self, self-starters self and they move forward. Um, you know, it looks like we only got about seven and a half minutes left to the end. And I think for uh, the ones who have already deployed, I think the judges are beginning to certify the results. Um, but also at the end of this, we're going to find out about who won the online hackathon. Um, you know, do you, do you have any thoughts on that? Have you been following that at all? I have been. I have been. And did you know one of our competitors, Megan, was in the online hackathon as well? I mean, she could oh, win twice, not once, but twice in one year. I mean, t t try to take that crown off that head, you know, there. And I would be proud, too. I mean, so we have that kind of thing that could happen. We don't know who's won yet. We know who's in the running. Uh, you know, we've had some great submissions. I hope next year this, this event grows even further. You know, we give new challenges and new people come in and say, hey, I can do this. I can be 10 grand richer here with an hour, oh, not even an hour, 40 minutes worth of time. Nick, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, and I think we just it, missed it, but uh, if we can cut to Dan's room, uh, I'm hearing from our judges that uh, Megan actually walked into Dan's room to check oh. on him. Um, oh, I guess she's, she's gone back there. since then, but uh, it's really, really impressive stuff, really fun stuff that's going on. Uh, look at this. He's also giving a shout out to all his family there. Shout out to Mastodon Technologies. Great partner of Appy, and I've met them. There's a great crew there. Uh, there we see he's just looking at his uh, computer, chilling out. Um, I don't know if he can hear us or not, uh, but but very impressive stuff from, from Dan there. Uh, and uh, he's he's giving a sh big shout out to all his fans here at Appian. Well, you've, you've got a few new ones today, Dan, I think. Yeah, he may not want to either. Like he just he's just got that stoic look of, you know, hey, I'm Dan. I'm the man. I'm done. Take it in. Bask in the glory, so to speak. But the thing is, everybody, everybody here is in the running. I mean, we don't know who's won. We don't know who's won. We know some people got done early. We know we got some done. Some people are parading a little bit, you know, using some other Appian features to uh, increase their brand, if you will. And, you know, I think I think maybe some of the people are putting some extra stuff here are going to get a little bit of extra benefit as well. Um, you know, you don't get extra credit for finishing early. Um, it's completeness, getting all the features done. But I honestly think, Nick, that all our competitors are in really good shape here. I mean, we, they just have different approaches. Yeah, it's, it, it's funny. You're looking at the, the crew there, and Megan's just got this grin on her face. Like, she's like, <laughs> I think she thinks she's won. Like, she's just there. She's like, I, I got this. We're, we're, we're ready to go. We're, we're done. Um, and just, just to clarify, I'm hearing from, uh, I'm hearing from my team here that I act, they actually cannot hear this commentary. So uh, this is just between, you know, Val, you and myself, and of course, all of our, all of our viewers here today. Um, but yeah, like that, that grin, she's, she, I can't stop slapping at that. She's just grinning. She, she's, she's in good shape. I think it's going to be interesting. Well, think about this too, Nick. I mean, if she's grinning now, imagine the grin, a $10,000 grin. 
somebody's going to be wearing it. And it could be her, and we could be laughing about it. And we're kind of glad they can't hear us. Everybody out in Appian World, thank you so much for tuning in and participating in this event and listening to us and, and showing all these great things. I mean, we feel very close to you, very impassioned about this. And I'm just going to be tickled pink, whoever wins here, or tickled blue, or tickled any color of the rainbow here. I mean, isn't that how you feel here, Nick, too? I mean, this has been such a great event. No, absolutely. This has been a lot of fun. And I've already got some ideas for next year. I mean, hopefully... Um, you know, if everybody's safe and things go back to normal next year, we can do Appy and World 2022 in person. I would love for us to have like a commentator's desk in the middle of the floor where you and I can just sit and we can not only do live commentary in the hackathon, but I think we should do live commentary on everything. I think the whole event, you know, run by you and me, we can talk to everything. I, I think we'll be fine. You know, I, I think it would be amazing. It's going to add a lot. Uh, I'm going to talk to some people and see if we can, we can make that happen. Yeah, you know what, Nick? I want to high five people. Like the man, you know, chest bump, fist bump, whatever. And you, when you think about it here, we're showing some of the new features of 21.2. We haven't touched on RPA. We haven't touched on EP. All those things are, you know, just ready to go, easy to integrate. Nick, you and I already do it all the time. I mean, we might want to add that to our challenge next year. I mean, take it up a level of, it's not even taking up a level, it's just there, right? Just functionality that you can easily add. And, you know, what's the next great challenge for these people, Nick? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, we didn't even do include the full automation offering in this challenge. So to see next year a challenge that includes, you know, records, RPA, IDP, um, yeah. sort of bringing it all together in one application, that's going to be challenging to get done in an hour. So, uh, you know, I'm really impressed with the competitors, although I'm not envious of what their position might be next year based on what uh, devious challenges engineering comes up with. Um, but it looks like we're coming up on the final set. We've got about uh, two minutes and 35 seconds seconds left, something like that. Um, you know, most of the competitors are done. There's a few things being finished here. It looks like uh, Mike and uh, Young Gun are still working hard and finishing this stuff. So, you know, Val, any, any final thoughts as we come into our last time here? Yeah, and you know, I think about it is that, um, you know, I knew we had talented people here. I knew we had some, you know, really amazing game-changing features. And to see people put all this together into, you know, something that I don't know about you, but yeah, I'd be a little bit nervous. I'd be a little bit nervous going on into things, you know, not confidence in Appian skills, but the time and, you know, coming out on top and everybody's handled it so well. I mean, you know, I got an immediate sense, even from the interviews, that the type of people that we were dealing with here, not only very diverse, you know, very talented, but ready for the challenge. And boy, are were they ready? I mean, being done early, uh, getting something up and running, a full application. I mean, we're talking about the data integration, the presentation, the reporting, uh, the records layout, all of that in under an hour. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's a sight to behold, and I'm so glad uh, we were part of it, Nick. Yeah, and I mean, even for even if you don't win this hackathon, I mean, these these six, these really are the creme de la creme of the IPN community. It's, uh, you know, really impressive to see them up here and really crushing it. So, um, you know, even if they don't take home the $10,000 this year, they're going to be back next year with strong competition. And I'm sure they're going to be uh, studying hard all year to get ready for that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, we're only like a minute out from, you know, hands off keyboards, mice down, whatever you want to call it. Like, you're done. You're done, right? Yeah. And most people are already at that point, like they're already done. They're just chilling. Maybe they're, uh, you know, patting each other on the back, walking from room to room. You know, uh, you know even a virtual high five, you know, is kind of good in these points. I mean, we're under 50 seconds at this right. point. Oh, man, Nick. I mean, this is just uh, it's been so fun to be a part of, hasn't it, my friend? Yeah, I haven't been this excited since the season finale of Top Chef, man. I mean, really, I'm, I'm you know, we're, we've got. Wow, we're, we're really coming down to the wire. It looks like we got about like 20 seconds left or so. Um, yeah, and everyone looks very, very calm. God, that, that smirk is still on Megan's face. We'll never forget it, will we? We won't forget about Young Gun. We, we will not. Um, we really are. But uh, yeah, it looks like we're coming down to the wire here. Yeah, we got less than 10 seconds. Everybody join me in here. Five, four, three, two, one. It's over, baby. Hands off the keyboard, you're done. Wow, I'll tell you what, I mean, <laughs> what an exciting finish. Felt like we started it a little bit early, like 40 minutes in, people were done, but people were still working at the end. And right now, right now, Nick, the judge is certifying the results. They'll be ready to crown the winner shortly. Who's gonna walk away with 10 grand? I can't wait to see. 
Yeah, me too. I mean, just impressive, impressive showing across all the contenders. Uh, we want to say a huge thank you to all of them for joining this competition. Uh, you know, we're really excited to be able to showcase all the amazing talent we have in the Abbey community. Um, and as we near the end of this hackathon challenge, we'd like to share some more highlights from our time of getting to know the contestants. What's your ideal tech setup? I, I will say there's some people that think that it's better to just work with a single screen and not have an external <coughs> monitor, but they are, it, it's not just an opinion, it's actually that they're just wrong. They really should, <laughs> if they have the space, use that second <laughs> monitor. Have you authored many posts? Actually, I have not. Not a whole lot of that, so. Uh, just a lurker. Don't you want to unlock all the community achievements? <laughs> I thought about it. Cross stitch is definitely not low code. Huh. Okay, that was horrible. <laughs> just give me one clap in front of your face to sync the video. Me also? Yeah. Perfect, thank you. All right, I'm gonna mute myself and take it away, April. Movie magic, that's what, that, that's what the, the clap is. Um, yeah, so. Take that 20 minutes of recording and condense them to the best, like, two minutes, so don't feel any pressure. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. We're just shooting, I'm trusting you. We're just shooting the shit at the pub, Jason. That's it, nothing. Uh, wonderful. Do you have anything to say to, to your um, competitors? Everyone just good luck. Oh, that's so sweet, Mike. No, you don't want to crush the competition. You all better watch out. Nothing. No, eh. that's fine. This year, we wanted to step it up. Step. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm channeling my like in seventh grade. I was in the Music Man, uh, and I'm channeling that that energy. Thanks, everyone. We're really glad we could show that and it didn't just become a DVD extra feature. Uh, anyway, we're happy everyone joined us for a virtual level lever live build challenge. Uh, but it wasn't the only hackathon this year at Happy and World. You know, that's right, Nick. Earlier this week, we wrapped up our annual online hackathon where teams work together for a longer period of time to create some really compelling projects. Uh, and right now, we're excited to welcome Malcolm Ross, Appian's Vice President, Product Strategy and Deputy CTO to announce the winners. Take it away, Malcolm. Thanks, Val. Thanks, Nick. I'm Malcolm Ross, VP Product Strategy for Appian. The past hour has been very exciting. It's been great to see what an individual can accomplish that quickly using the speed and power of the Appian platform. And kudos to our brave and skilled contestants to build in front of this live audience today. But the Live Build Challenge hasn't been the only hackathon this year. For the past two months, developers have been competing in our fourth annual hackathon for a chance to win $20,000 in prizes. Thank you for all the participants, and we had some great submissions this year in our online hackathon. We shortlisted five finalists who demoed their apps Monday, May 10th, to a panel of expert judges. I had the privilege of evaluating them along with Lang Lee, Chief of Staff of Appian, Michael Beckley, Founder and CTO of Appian, John Bratton Sevick, Senior Analyst with Forrester, Veronica Combs, Senior Writer for Tech Republic, and Adrian Bridgewater, a freelance technologist. Our judges chose a winner based on the ideas, creativity, and originality, execution, and use of Appian's latest features, and potential impact. You can check out all this year's submissions at community.appian.com hackathons. So here are our finalists. First, Clean and Green by Team Cognizant. Decoder Ring by David Lewis from Horizon Industries, Healthcare Communication Center by Vision Point Systems, Ignite Patient Engagement Solution by Team Ignite, and Trackable by Team Verum. It was an amazing competition. We're excited to be able to announce the winners of the online hackathon for Appian World 2021. In third place, we have Decoder Ring by David Lewis of Horizon Industries. Decoder Ring was a great individual submission by David that really explored the different ways of ciphers and decoding ciphers can be applied in the Appian product. And of course, encouraged us all to learn more about cybersecurity and the application of cybers in our IT security infrastructure. And in second place, we had Ignite Patient Engagement Solution. This was a comprehensive health management application that united a number of integrated technologies like NIH Promises, Wythings, Round Trip Rideshare, Aunt Bertha, and even Microsoft Team Chats and use the Appian record sync architecture on EMR data. Great solution for comprehensive healthcare management for individual patients as well as healthcare providers. And in first place for the Appian World Online Hackathon for 2021, we have Trackable by Michael Sujith and Santosh Kumar from Verum. 
Congratulations on your win. The trackable solution was inspired by the challenges we had today in the COVID-19 pandemic, especially in areas like India, where the tracking of critical supplies are needed to maintain the health and well-being of the populace. Great solution that not only combined appian capabilities to track the progress of shipments throughout the entire world, but has also combined integrations of Twilio and Azure to combine that with a detailed tracking and authentication capabilities. Congratulations again on the solution win for Trackable. Congratulations to all the winners, and thank you for your submissions by your participants, as well as the judging for this year's online Appian World Hackathon. Be sure to check out all the winners and the submissions at community.appian.com slash hackathons. And now I'd like to turn back to April Schupel for the announcement of this year's winner of the Live Build Challenge for Appian World 2021. Thank you so much, Malcolm. The online hackathon is always such a great way to see the creativity and skills of our user community. Thank you to everyone that submitted this year and congrats again to all the finalists and to the winners. But now it's the moment that you've all been waiting for. The results are in. It was such a close and tight race, but pulling out ahead with a one minute faster deployment, our winner is Megan. We are so excited to have Megan join us here right now. Well, Megan, congratulations. How are you feeling right now? Feeling pretty good. <laughs> feeling pretty, yeah, I would feel I would feel pretty good as well. I mean, uh, it was so exciting to watch you work. And not only did you do it so fast, but you also, you know, made those UI changes and really like made it look beautiful and didn't just focus on the functionality, but it was clear that those new features helped you out a lot. So which new features were the most critical in helping you achieve victory here? Definitely the, the new low-code data modeling was phenomenal in speeding up development. It is game-changing, right? The record relationships, goodbye are the days of database views, and they're so much more powerful, so it's amazing. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, you just won $10,000. Now what? What are you going to do? Definitely going to go eat some sushi. Um, but after that, you know, Definitely planning a vacation of some sort. Well, you definitely earned it. You deserved it. You absolutely inspired us. The live chat was blowing up for you. It's team Megan's all over the place. Congratulations again, and thank you so much. We are so proud of what developers like you bring to our Appian community, and I can't wait to see what you do next. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, so yeah, that... Uh, we thank you again. Congratulations, Megan. We, uh, we are so proud of what developers like you bring to the Avian community. And thanks also to all the participants of both of this year's hackathons, to our wonderful judges and reviewers, and thanks to you all for tuning in and making this event what it is. Be sure to continue checking Appian community to see what we do next. We hope that you enjoyed watching our first ever live build challenge as much as we enjoyed putting it on for you. Thanks to all the contestants, you took a step up to the plate to show off your skills and also the speed and power of Appian to a live audience. Thank you so much to everyone involved in putting this event together. It was truly amazing. So like I said, be sure to continue checking Appian community to stay in the know about the latest with the Appian product, as well as future events that we'll be hosting. With Appian community, the connected possibilities are truly endless. We'll see you next time. <laughs>